Um, so um, today I'm just going to give a, a short overview about the um, pursuit of novel digital endpoint. And uh, so earlier, I think my excitement of being part of this uh, event had woken my dog. So uh, apologies in advance if my dog start barking uh, in the background. I'll definitely try, uh, try to be uh, a bit quiet. Um, so, um, just a quick disclaimer, um, I'm an Abby employee, and um, so, uh, you know, the view expressed in this presentation are solely a synthesis of my own opinion and do not reflect the companies and consortia that I work for. Um, and all the materials referenced in this presentation are property of their original owners. Um, so, as a, you know, we all know uh, we're now living in a new world um, where sensors are actually very much part of our daily lives. Um, sensors you know, keep collecting data, generating data, and supposed to keep us safe. Um, and so hopefully we are now learning, um, be able to use these data and make more objective and data decisions um, in our day-to-day -day life. Um, some of these sensors now have penetrated into our health world today um, and created very much an unprecedented opportunity for us to develop digital biomarkers and novel digital endpoints and potentially even transform the way we develop medicine. So it's really an exciting time. And uh, recognizing um, such a, a value and opportunity, I think what I have seen is this, this industry in the past 10 years has um, um, generated an industry-wide pursuit of novel digital endpoint. So um, uh, in the past 10 years or so, we have seen over 3,000 publications um, describing more than hundreds of novel digital measures um, uh, across many different therapeutic areas. And some early adopters, uh, pharmaceutical companies, have taken these early concepts, test them, in the drug development process and using those wearables and sensors and mobile apps uh, that develop and commercialized by vendors. However, ultimately, um, these new measurements have to get uh, health authorities buy-in before it can really um, uh, create tangible value in the drug development process. Um, so, Therefore, it's very critical that we bring uh, health authorities on board in our journey. And the good news is um, what I've seen in the past five years, specifically, the regulatory environment has been shifting. Um, we seeing that um, there's a 21st Century uh, Cure Act, uh, specifically called out on patient-focused drug development um, program process. And then recently, we started to see more and more of these global health authorities and agencies uh, providing more guidance on the use of uh, health, digital health tools. Um, although there are no official um, NDE development guidance yet, um, I see that uh, FDA had particularly um, very much a, a catalyst in this whole effort. Um, they have created not only the drug development tool qualification program and published uh, many of the applications um, so that sponsors and companies who wanted to develop novel digital endpoint, now they have examples they can follow. Um, in addition, they also sponsor city and uh, work with other consortia to provide uh, clarities and develop um, the novel digital endpoint development framework in the absence of official uh, NDE development guideline. And they are very much uh, active, involved in IMI, critical path, and some of the transcellular work, uh, work that we are actually working. So within, uh, within a lot of these um, consortia effort, uh, regulatories provide active feedback on the development of NDE is really um, invaluable. And recently, uh, just to highlight, FDA also provided um, the research grant to further encourage the development of drug uh, development tools, and it's further um, evident to their support of this effort. So as a result of these public efforts, um, we have seen that there are two 
uh, novel digital endpoint have been qualified um, by a European agency. And now these endpoints can be used as a secondary endpoint to support draft development program. And currently there are five, um, uh, basically the novel digital endpoint um, uh, has been submitted, um, a letter of intent has been accepted, and they're under FDA's review. And uh, very encouragingly, I uh, want to highlight is that um, these are um, kind of description of um, the concept of interest that being proposed, uh, particularly um, as uh, Ray had highlighted, like uh, measurement of pain has uh, notoriously known to be very difficult to measure. However, um, agency now seems to be accepting the concept of using the uh, measurement uh, using the accelerometer uh, to measure the physical activity can be a surrogate of that concept of measurement of pain. So um, that is very encouraging um, for the field. So, um, so far, we have seen that many pharmaceutical companies now um, not only taking this um, into their drug development program, and um, more, more than ever, um, we're seeing uh, the, the use of uh, these endpoints in the rank endpoint, more so than the exploratory endpoint now. And so it really highlights um, the effort and the maturity and the progression the industry have made today. And at, um, at Avi, um, well, we are a traditional pharmaceutical company. Um, we believe our mission is to develop the most innovative medicine and bring them to our patient as fast as we can. And in order to do that, um, we need to recruit patients fast in our clinical trials. But um, importantly, um, to optimize our um, clinical evidence, we need to actually enrich the responders in our study population and also have um, objective tools that can actually capture the clinical efficacy uh, in the right way. So this um, uh, has led to the effort of uh, us including the novel gel endpoint as part of our medicine uh, development program across. And personally, I also believe that novel digital endpoint is a foundational capability that can enable, I call them the second uh, or the next generation of precision medicine. Uh, as Brim and uh, the panel have mentioned earlier, uh, we can use these pre uh, precise measure um, like novel digital endpoint to, um, to capture the clinical eff efficacy in a much more precise manner but we also can use a digital biomarker to predict who and when um, it will be needed for intervention. And further, if we can really master the skill of um, novel digital endpoint measurement, uh, we can couple them with the drug delivery system and create a so-called closed loop, like smart uh, insulin pump type of system and ultimately deliver in a much more personalized care uh, for our patients. So uh, we have defined a uh, novel digital endpoint as a physiological and behavior parameters measured through the connected digital health tools that can be used to indicate disease status and or major health outcome. And according to CITI's uh, NDE development framework, there are two different types of NDE. Uh, the first one is existing endpoint that can be measured in a new possible better way such as sleep or um, digitized uh, six-minute walk test. A second type is a new endpoint that has not uh, previously been possible to assess, such as a stride velocity um, that is being used um, for the Duchenne muscular dystrophy and also the nocturnal scratch. So um, uh, we right now have been applying the novel digital endpoint approach across our drug development process. Um, in the early asset, we're now using the novel digital endpoint to help uh, translate the cellular signals to physiological and behavior measurements uh, to obtain much more um, objective insight. Um, in addition, um, we're also seeing some of the uh, potential benefit um, that um, through the frequency 
of a high sampling rate of our, our data, we're now able to uh, reduce a smaller sample size in our early asset studies. Um, in a late phase uh, area, um, we have um, been applying the novel digital endpoint um, to help the evidence generation um, and also uh, conduct real world um, effectiveness study. And ultimately, as I mentioned earlier, we would love to be able to take this type of measurement and use to support our label claim. So all of this are currently in the work. Uh, in addition, um, as I mentioned, that uh, these endpoints will really need um, regulatory acceptance in order to yield tangible benefit for the drug development program. So our team work very closely and follow and, um, the uh, FDA's drug development uh, qualification process. Um, and uh, as, as highlighted in this detail, um, it really gives you some uh, detail, uh, understanding of um, the evidentiary area requirement and the touch points um, that each program need to consider. So, uh, so far we have mapped that drug development uh, uh, tool qualification process onto the IND pathway. And as I mentioned, this is really intended to help identify what are some of the touch points and also um, the alignment and feedback that we need to obtain from the regulators. And this has become um, our, um, um, as Christian called it, that's SOP um, when we're to consider developing the novel digital endpoint. Um, and so far, I think uh, we are very fortunate uh, for trying to do the uh, novel digital endpoint uh, almost like a second mover um, because the, the feel of sensors and wearables have matured quite a bit. Um, uh, many vendors have done a fantastic job um, developing these tools and uh, develop algorithms and then went through the verification and analytical validation process and made them readily available so we can actually take it into the clinical trial and test for clinical validation state. So I think some of the uh, vendors are also going to be in the event today. So um, those are really great work um, they, they have produced. Um, some other areas, um, and I would call them the challenge, the current challenge, is around the pain um, and measurement of fatigue, depression, and digitizing the UPDS, OS, FRS. These are uh, remain to be very challenging to develop. And based on um, our, uh, our engagement with the uh, uh, agency, they have highly recommended that. Uh, industry should really collaborate in those area, and therefore um, we can actually advance in the measurement of this area and enable medicine development in a much more efficient manner. Um, and a few years ago, um, uh, we have published um, the parade study that uh, Christian had kindly mentioned um, and highlight the uh, digital adherence issue um, is something that I think all sponsors and um, developers need to address before we can really push this and mature this field. Um, so in the past few years, I think a lot of um, folks in this field has um, uh, managed to identify solutions that can overcome this digital adherence issue. Um, um, although that's the good news, I still wanted to highlight that uh, we need to be aware of patient burden on the data collection fatigue. Um, some of the data analysis challenge remains and the data ownership and ethic issues uh, remain to be uh, um, critical topics. I think the industry need to um, take a stand uh, um, and have a position for it. Um, and just um, kind of quickly wrap up. Um, so besides what I had highlighted, um, uh, some of those challenges, um, I think what I see is uh, many companies are uh, busy developing their novel digital endpoint, uh, building the infrastructures and developing algorithms and engaging with regulators. Um, all of those are necessary work uh, individual companies can accomplish uh, and align those efforts uh, with their development strategy. Um, however, I think uh, what I'm highlighting here is that there are still a lot of work need to be done um, that's beyond so a single company can accomplish. Um, just to name a few, um, the data standard is one thing that currently is still missing in this particular field. Uh, without these data standards, we won't be able to really aggregate uh, cross companies' data or compare them in a in a uh, efficient manner. 
So um, that is, a, I think, a very much a necessity for the, this field and for this industry to consider. Um, and other areas such as um, define the um, process, uh, standardize the process for endpoint validation that will require a lot of regulata regulatory um, input. Um, that is another area uh, needs um, uh, further work as well. And finally, I think, um, you know, if we wanted to use these kind of data in the real world um, for real world effectiveness trials, I think having HTA involvement, um, understanding their acceptance of this kind of data will be also crucial. So some of these uh, will require um, uh, industry-wide effort. So in conclusion, um, I, um, you know, I, I view that the trend of the industry pursuit of novel digital endpoint remains very strong um, because I think many of us have believed that NDE really holds a significant potential to enable the new medicine development, uh, particularly in some of challenging therapeutic area like neuroscience. Um, the creation of the data standard, as I mentioned, and the acceptance uh, of NDE by regulators and HTA are still very much needed and it will require uh, cross-industry collaboration on that. Um, and then um, finally, to call out the FDA's um, drug development tool qualification framework really has provide um, uh, uh, sufficient uh, guidance for ND development. I think um, many companies are now can um, pursue the drug development tool um, and, and ND development through this, uh, through this uh, pathway and uh, even um, adopt them into the IND pathway. So hopefully um, that is a encouraging news for everyone. And with that, um, I'm gonna stop here and uh, you know, thank you for your attention and may the force be with you. <laughs> thank you, Michelle. A very nice ending and a great talk. Excellent. Um, there are a couple of questions, but in the interest of time, we can only pick maybe one or maybe a second very short. So, um, the one that I would focus on here is maybe a bit of the patient voice. So um, could you explain um, where or where, where would you recommend uh, to bring in the patient voice in the development of digital endpoints? Mm -hmm. Yeah, great question. Um, and so in the um, drug development tool um, qualification process, and also the city guidance uh, specific kind of highlight that the concept of interest that you wanted to measure really should have patient's voice and input at that very early stage. So, um, you know, for example, uh, we're currently developing the nocturnal scratch uh, for the atopic darn population. And, and it's very important to understand, well, patients said, um, you know, the itch is a, a major disease burden and a severe itch that causes them to have sleep disturbance at night. However, um, we aren't able to really capture that um, um, subjective sensation of itch. However, we can turn it around, potentially using uh, a wearable device to quantify scratch. So the itch and scratch um, concept really need to kind of get some uh, clarity based on that patient's voice. Is that going to be meaningful to them? Um, because the scratch has a lot of downstream consequence of um, uh, lesion on the skin and cause of uh, further infection and then have a really that vicious cycle. So I think you know, having that uh, early engagement with patient and it's a great thing that uh, FDA right now are conducting a lot of these patient voice um, workshop to help collect that voice for the industry use. So you know, not every company has to go after the patient group individually. These are actually public information on the FDA website that people can leverage. Um, but you know, if you're working in a certain rare disease area that there is no such information, uh, I, I would highly recommend um, take that step early and, uh, and really go deep and, and unpack some of the concepts as much as you can. Um, so the... Uh... The two regulatory um, accepted new endpoints that you have been mentioning, um, the question is, were they uh, kind of primaries or um, key secondary endpoints? Yeah, great question. So these are now can be used as a secondary endpoint. So, but um, no, there's still uh, very much a primary endpoint that defined on the FDA website 
um, people still have to follow those uh, regulations you know, in order to, do, to get their drug approval. However, these are great sensitive measures that you can use um, to detect the efficacy of your medicine development. Excellent. Well, thank you so much, Michelle. Um, 